What's going on there folks? Good Sunday morning. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this March 27th, 2022 date, about 9.22 a.m. California time. The latest quake out there on the globe shows a 2.4 earthquake. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here from the USGS, see what we got going on around the globe currently, or at least the, the flat scale map. Here's the latest info on the uh, earthquake activity. Of course, we had that movement off the coast of Oregon last night. Looks like they've upgraded that 4.6 to a 5.1. So it's kind of a significant uptick uh, as far as upgrade goes when it comes from the USGS. Originally a 4.6 magnitude, now upgraded to a 5.1. So pretty strong little shaker out there into the Blanco fracture zone just uh, west of the Cascadia subduction zone. If you recall, we had that pretty good swarm of activity. Oh, I think it's been a few months now uh, since that swarm happened, but we do got to keep an eye on this area down here in Northern California. I remember after the swarming kicked up, we've seen a, uh, a six pointer uh, kick up in the area of Northern California down here at the Southern end with a pretty extensive swarm into the Southern end of the Cascadia. So. Kind of watching that region uh, but for now 5.1 up there and also it looks like uh, earlier or late last night this is a uh, last night earthquake 2.4 at uh 26.4 kilometers so it's kind of a kind of a, a little bit of pressure out there along the west coast lake almanor did have some activity as well uh, but kind of the big picture, if you're backing out here now, looks like we may be seeing a little bit of decline uh, in movement up north and working its way down south here. Nevada seeing a swarm of activity uh, just around the Mina, Nevada area. A couple earthquakes there within the last hour, mostly microquakes. This area just to the northwest of Tonopah, Nevada. Uh, of course, we had some movement yesterday in the Antelope Valley area and Long Valley Super Volcano just outside of there around Mammoth Lakes with a couple uh, ones and twos in that region. Activity up and down the, um, what is this, Calaveras Fault Zone stretching into the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault showing some activity overnight as well. San Francisco right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. Uh, seeing some movement as well, just microquakes for now. A little bit of activity kicking up here in the Riverside uh, with a 1.3. Nothing significant. If you look at the 2.5 map and above, at least for California, there's only that 3.3 from Walker, uh, which kicked off uh, yesterday. So majority of these quakes, all microquakes. Uh, looking at the Great Basin area and into the Intermountain West regions, things kind of a um, little calm. Look at the Pacific Northwest up here, very calm in terms of earthquake activity, even in the microquake department. <clears throat> Oklahoma. Ah, thank God for coffee, that's all I can say. Gotta have my coffee every morning. 3.3, Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, that one was from uh, <clears throat> 1501 UTC time, so that uh, puts it at uh, just about an hour or so ago for that uh, Oklahoma earthquake. Some movement down into the Pecos, Texas area as well. Looks like most of this was from earlier this morning or late last night. Eastern part of the country. One earthquake popping up here along the, uh, just outside of the Great Smoky Mountains, a 2.5 near Sneedville, Texas, or uh, Tennessee, Sneedville. All right, 8.1 in the kilometer department. The rest of the country looks pretty quiet. Um, this area, I've seen an earthquake here last night. I remember this coming in here just off the coast of Mexico. Um, that one at 10 kilometers. So we have seen a little increase in movement here along the Costa Rica area and areas into the Middle America Trench. Uh, yesterday, there's uh, Puerto Rico, some activity, nothing significant. 16 earthquakes on the map, 3.8, the largest here. That one well west. Uh, near the Santo Domingo area in the Mona Passage region. South America still remains relatively quiet except for the 5.2 in the Ecuador area. But if you recall, this area has uh, been, been fairly quiet here for the past few days. Of course, threes and twos do exist and are taking place here, uh, but anything above 4.0 uh, 
Uh, we just we're not seeing it at the moment. Uh, let's see. Samoa southward, one little earthquake around the Kermadec Islands. This one pretty deep, 224 kilometers in there. And uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on here throughout the uh, Fiji Islands region. Papua New Guinea, a couple fours throughout the area and up around the Taiwan region as well. Japan, still seeing some aftershock sequences following that seven pointer. Uh, last week, right? I believe it's been last week. Maybe even, maybe it's been longer than a week now. I think it's within the last two weeks. There we go. And a little activity up here. Uh, North Japan, 5.0. Rest of the region here still waiting on some sizable earthquake activity. It's just not happening. There is movement obviously taking place. Let me uh, bring up the EMSC model here real quick. Stand by for just a second. And um, let's see, go ahead and pop this up here a little bit here in the closer scale map. Uh, so there's some of the threes up here along the uh, Philippine plate, Western Philippine plate into Taiwan. But uh, even looking further west, the Middle East area is pretty quiet. There's the uh, twos and some smaller quakes there throughout the region of the Mediterranean. And up around um, areas northward, Crete as well. But uh, it's just kind of a little on the quiet side here for this area. Here's the list. Greece, Turkey, quite a few twos and whatnot. But no major release. And I'm sure we're building up quite a bit of pressure here in this area. It's kind of been at a, kind of been at a standstill for a moment uh, when it comes to terms of uh, uh, anything above 4.0 in this area. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, the same. It's pretty pretty quiet. Just coming to a, uh, a standstill as well. I don't know if we got any further uh, activity in the Azores region. Let's go ahead and check out that uh, movement here real quick. Let's see if I can pop this over a little bit without going way out of view. I don't believe we have too much going on out there. Canary Island shown a little bit of activity over the last 24 hours, but uh, uh, look at this, kind of stretched out. There's not a whole lot of movement taking place there. So we'll come back and check that out when things get uh, a little bit busy. The uh, EMSC model kind of shows a 4.9 there off the coast of Oregon. Kind of odd. Normally uh, the USGS is the ones that downgrade like crazy, but uh, they were pretty uh, adamant about upgrading this uh, that earthquake to a 5.1 even after it's been reviewed that's pretty crazy local seismic activity here at Yellowstone National Park uh, looks like a little bit of small quakes here very very small microquakes overnight and early this morning taking place here in Yellowstone but overall not a whole lot uh, of movement there at Yellowstone currently. Check out the big island, see what's rocking and rolling out here. Only a 3.3, at least on this little model. And uh, otherwise, things, look at this, only 11 earthquakes. So a little bit of slowdown out here as well. Uh, big picture right now, just kind of, uh, uh, kind of iffy. Kind of iffy as to where this is uh, going to start taking place at. Uh, and of course, we've seen that movement here along the west coast last night, some further activity inland. Um, but I'm still kind of thinking possibly uh, some uptick here along the middle America Trench, Costa Rica area uh, with all the height and movement um, over the last 24 hours. So we'll, we'll definitely watch that and keep an eye on it, folks. Earthquakes Canada map will. Zoom in here up to the neighbors to the north, and uh, we've got 2.1 uh, near the Port Alice, BC area. That's just off of the, uh, well, into the Cascadia subduction zone. Cascadia sits right here. Anything inland and deep like that, uh, Cascadia, 23.6 kilometers down into the uh, northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Over the last, oh, what is that, last month or so, 
we've seen uh, some movement kind of clustered up here in a little group and trimmer activity has been relatively quiet again no no trimmers this is from yesterday and it's continuing like that for about five days now six days so we'll see uh, what happens in that area checking out the solar weather department uh, we got some big sunspots rotating in the view 2976 a pretty monster sized sunspot uh, but when it comes to the dynamics, I don't think it's quite set up yet for anything significant. Things look somewhat stable in the magnetic field. But uh, again, that could change. We'll see. Uh, the solar flare threat only stands at about 45% chance of a C flare, M flare at 5. And X flare down there around the 1%. Uh, looks like, uh, I don't know, did we even get a G1 class storm? Doesn't look like uh, we got it. Didn't reach those levels unless this thing is coming in late, which could be possible. So we will uh, keep an eye on it. It's still standing here for a G1 class storm. Uh, we'll see if that comes in a little bit later tonight, folks. So, all right. Have a good day. Enjoy your Sunday. We'll be back a little bit later on uh, this evening with a uh, complete update video. Take care, folks.